والسلام تسليما كثيرا. When I was seven years old, I watched the best movie ever. When I came home and I ran into my bedroom, I noticed that there was a little shoebox that said the line. When I got closer towards and I grabbed and I put it into my hand, it looked amazing. I opened it up and inside there was a fully functioning Simba action. Now, if those of you who have not watched it before, the Lion King, it's a story of a little lion cub named Simba who loses his mom and dad and lives away with Adam. Now this Simba action figure, it would go side to side and it had a little button on it. When you press the button, it would go Rah. I want you guys to all do it with me. We're going to press the button, it goes Rah. One more time, one more time. We press the button, it goes Rah. I love this action figure. I took it with me everywhere. I remember at night before I'd go to bed, I would put Simba next to me and I'd be like, I said, I want it. And Simba have a good night. And he would look at me and he would go, we press the button, he goes, Rah! I remember in Minnesota during the spring and fall, we'd go outside and we'd see some geese. And when we'd go next to the geese, we'd press the button and it would go, now, about that time, something interesting started happening in my mushroom. There was a new group of people who started coming to my mushroom. They spoke a different type of language than I spoke, and they wore a different kind of clothes, too. These people were called refugees. I want you to say that to me. Refugees. One more time. Refugees. Now, a refugee is someone who had to leave their home. 
They had to leave their toys, they had to leave their clothes, they had to leave all of the food in their fridge because their home was not safe anymore. It could be a war, it could be a natural disaster like a tornado or an earthquake, but they had to leave everything and come to a new country for safety. Now these kids who came to my mustard were from a place called Kosovo. Can you say Kosovo? Kosovo! My mustard, the imam of the mustard, he comes to the front of the mustard and he opens up these plastic bags. He opens up what? And we all kind of were scratching our heads. Why is the imam holding up a plastic bag? He held it up. And he said, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today, I am going to give each and every one of you a plastic bag. And when you go home, I want you to find the toy that you love the most. I want you to put it in the plastic bag. I want you to come back to the question. I want you to bring it, and we're going to give it to you, refugees. Why? Because Allah, our Creator, wants us to give out of what we love. So, for my brother, it was super easy. He came home, he ran into the garage, he opened up the plastic bag, he found his baseball glove, he put his baseball glove in, he came into the kitchen and he said, Mommy, this is what I love the most. For my older sister Shireen, it was super easy too. She ran up to her bed, she opened up her plastic bag, she put in her stuffed animals. She came to the kitchen and she said, Mommy, this is what I love the most. Do you guys know what toy I love the most though? Simba! Simba! Simba. I remember that moment. I was standing outside of my door. I put my hand on the doorknob and I twisted it and the door flung open. I went inside. Simba was sitting on the couch. I looked at Simba and Simba looked at me. I got closer towards him and I grabbed him. I put him in my hands and I looked at him. I opened up the plastic bag and as I started putting Simba inside, my hands started to shake and tremble. Sweat started to drip down my cheek. My throat started to feel dry and coarse, and I tried my best, but I just couldn't do it. I put Simba down. There was a Thomas the Train puzzle in the corner of my room, so I went to the corner of my room. I found the Thomas the Train puzzle. I opened up the plastic bag, I put it in, I went downstairs and I said, Here, Mommy, this is what I love the most. And you know what she said? No. Not so famous, mister. <laughs> she said it just like that. I was like, Yes, Mom, what? She said, I mean, you were supposed to give the toy that you love the most. Why didn't you? You bring Simba. It was a good question. I needed to figure out the perfect answer. I didn't know what I was going to tell her, and I was thinking about it, and then I go to my mom. Hey, mommy. That's what I call it. She said yes. I said, hey, mommy. She said yes. I said, hey, mommy. She said yes. What? I said, mommy, do you love me? <laughs> and she's like, yes. And I was like, mom, do you love me a lot? A lot? She said, yes. I said, mommy, do you love me more than anything in the whole wide world? And I said, yes. And I said, well, mom. If we are supposed to give out of what we love the most, why if we are supposed to give out of what we love the most, Mom, why don't you give me? Oh my Do you guys know what my mom did? Four, three, 
What? Do you know what my mom did? She gave away. <laughs> So, you guys have all been on your best until here. You've been doing amazing, but now you have to do even more amazing. Because I need everyone to be able to hear me. Can you hear me in the back? Okay, great. So, smile. My mom didn't give me On that day, my mom told me this. She said, Amir, do you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, he promises that when we give out of what we love the most, Allah gives us something so much better. So wait, 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 mom, so are you telling me if I give away Simba, you're going to give me a better toy? She says, no. When you give away Simba, Allah, our creator, Give us something so much better. And you know what? On that day, I gave away Simba. And she was right. I got something so much better. Years later, after I gave away the Simba, I was invited to a special community in Northern California, in Pleasanton to be exact. And I was yes. given the opportunity to share this story today. Bismillah rahman Okay, we're <laughs> Now today, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want to talk about a topic that is near and dear to me. It's about being big-hearted. <coughs> now, I know what you're thinking to yourself. You're saying, but Brother me, my heart is only this big. How can I make my heart bigger? And the answer is very simple. I want you to repeat after me. Plant-based. Joking. When I say being big hearted, I don't mean actually making our heart bigger. What I mean is becoming more calm and becoming more generous and becoming more loving and standing up against anyone who's being mean. Now, I care about this topic an awful lot. And the reason why I care about this topic is because of this guy over here, my big <laughs> And my brother was my best friend. But here's the thing. Things weren't always super easy for me. I remember when I would come home after school every day, my brother and I, we would play baseball. And it was the most fun thing ever. But one day, when I came home, and I went to his room, and I knocked on his door, and I said, Hey, Papa, can you come out? I couldn't hear I couldn't hear it. So I knocked again. Muhammad, are you in there? And I didn't hear it. And I thought, what could it possibly be? Why is my brother not responding to me? So I put my ear against the door, and I and I heard something. It was like. My older brother was crying. I asked him if I could come in the room, and he said yes. And when I came in, I saw that my older brother, he was sitting on his bed, crying. He sat next to me, I said, Muhammad, what's going on? And he said something that broke my heart. 
to me, some of the kids at the masjid are bullying. They're making fun of me. They all play together, but they don't invite me. Sometimes they call me bad names. Sometimes they make jokes about me, and they made my brother cry. And so today, I want to read you a special story, one that I love, and it's from a book called More Kids Stand Up to Bully. I know that. Okay, but before I actually read you the story, Allow me to introduce you a little bit about Noor Kids. So Noor Kids follows the story of Amin, Shirin, Asad, and Amir. They live in a city very similar to this one. It's called Maple Grove. And they go to a school called Northport Elementary. So you'll see Amin over here. He's a sports star. He loves baseball and soccer and football. He's got an older brother named Kasim who's in college. And sometimes he does stuff without thinking about it. And because of that, he gets in trouble. Then there's Asad. Asad is a scientist. He loves to break things apart just to figure out how to put them back together again. And he has a little baby sister named Yusuf. And then there's Shireen. Shireen is a trailblazer. She loves exploring all around the world. She has a twin brother named Jafar. And lots of times you'll see her exploring the world because she wants to be just like her mom who works for National Geographic. Then there's Amira. Amira is an artist. She loves exploring all of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings through art and poetry and painting. Now these four are the Nord Kids. Now for those of you who don't know, Nord Kids is a character building program. You'll notice some of our books are yellow, some are blue, some are green, because we tackle 36 topics, okay? And for the moms and dads here, if you're not a part of Nord Kids, please do take a look. So every month you'll get a new book delivered to your home, and every Thursday, we have a football for kids where kids are able to join in story times just like this. We have a booth outside. Okay, so I'm going to give you one story out of this book called See Into the Future. But before we start, I need everyone to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. You guys, I don't know how to tell you this. But, two weeks ago, my I was at a mushroom very yes. similar to this one, but it was in Dallas, Texas, and when I asked the children to say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, they, they said it a little bit louder. <laughs> but I'm just saying, do you guys think you can do a little bit louder? Like, on the count of three, we're going to say Bismillah Rahman Rahim. One, two, three. Okay, that, you guys, that was pretty good. But there was a couple of dads who didn't do it, so we're going to do it again. <laughs> We didn't have to do it again. I was trying to get you out. Okay. So, your dad's all bit it. We're going we're gonna to read this. If you can clap once, you need to clap twice. Stories of C. Everyone, please sit down in your chair. I want to tell you about science fair. The winner will be featured in the newspaper for all to see. You may even get the chance to appear on TV. Uh -oh. That's yes. After class, can I show you what I made? Yes. This is a modern spot. Of course, I'm sure it will be great. Here is the teacher. Zane felt this. Dismay means, like, means he felt a little bit sad. The lunch bell rang and everyone started to clear away, except for Zane, who decided to watch from his seat and sleep. Here are the eyeglasses they give you X ray vision. Policemen can use the glasses to 
catch. Billy. Subhanallah, says Mr. Salman. Two glasses to help keep everyone in Maple Grove safe and sound. But Zane had heard enough. He left the room, bit stunned on the ground. Mr. Mr. Salman says, don't worry, I said, I'm sure he will come around. Zane was jealous that Asif's project was so great, so he said something mean and filled him. I just saw the ugliest thing in the whole wide world. Asif's glasses. They made me want to pur 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 Jeepers, Zane, says Amin. That was a seriously mean thing to say. Asad, Asad is my friend. You need to be kinder next time, okay? Girl needs to, like, throw up. <laughs> and plus, says this gentleman, I think the eyeglasses are really cool. They are probably the best project at after hearing the compliments, Zane felt even more envious and cool. He stuck his foot out to trip Asad and make him look like a fool. Asad fell flat on his face. Food splattered all over the place. I tried to ignore you, but enough is enough, says Asad. Stop this. You are making my life so tough. Asad stood up for himself in front of Zayn. Asad tried to show him that bullying causes pain. When school was over, everyone climbed aboard the bus. Asad was worried. He didn't want Zayn to create another fuss. Asad, can I sit with you? Asked Zayn. Um, I guess. If you really have to, I'm sorry for being mean. That wasn't my intention. Is there any chance you would still let me see your invention? Sure, man. Okay, you guys, listen. Sure, man. But Asa didn't realize Zane's evil. Zane threw the eyeglasses out the window, breaking them in half. Zane held his belly and began to laugh. <laughs> 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 You guys, allow me to do my evil laugh. <laughs> now you have nothing for the fair tomorrow. I cannot wait to see you in Okay, so you guys. Why is Asad, why is Zane bullying Asad? Everyone, I'm calling you over here. Why is Zane bullying Asad? Um, because um, Zane is jealous that Asad's project is so good and Zane probably doesn't have anything or his project is not as good. Asad's project is so good so Zane is feeling jealous. That's why he's bullying. Number two. How did Asad stand up for himself? Over here. So Asad told him, he said, stop this. But did Zane stop? No. So now, when it doesn't end, this is when you go to a responsible adult, okay? Especially if bullying ever becomes physical, which it is now physical, right? Because he broke his glasses. Physical means that it, like, he broke something. He did something that's physical. Five, four, three. Dad, yeah. today, Zane broke my eyeglasses because he wants to see me fail. He is evil. I want him to be behind bars in jail. <laughs> I'm so sorry, son, says Dad. I'll call his parents to tell them what he has.
had stopped him. His dad was spoke. I spoke with Zane's parents about what you did to them. They said that Zane learned his lesson and will no longer teach you that way. Now, I think it's time you build an even, even better invention. What did you say? You think so, Dad? Asked Tessa. Absolutely, sport. Just ask a law student for help. He is your very best son. As I gathered his tools and supplies, he was determined to win first prize. As I worked the whole entire night, he wouldn't give up without a fight. After finishing, As I raised his hands and began to pray. Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you guided me through a tough situation. Now, my lord, I pray that you help me win this competition. People trickled into the school auditorium for the science fair, and each student had an amazing gadget to share. Paging Asa, paging Asa, the judges are waiting for you. Look, Asa, what do you have to show us today? Behold, the eyeglass is 2.0. It scans your mind to see how you think then. It guesses your future and draws it in ink. These glasses, we can see into the future. We are impressed, say the judges. Your invention is the best. The crowd gave a standing ovation. They love Asad's newest creation. Let's give us the round of applause. Asad came by. Asad came off the stage and wanted to, and went to go find Zane. Asad came off the stage and went to find Zane. He now had a way to show how bullying causes pain. Zane, would you like to try these glasses on? Aren't you worried I will break them or do something wrong? No. Just put them on and tell me what you see. When I look at you, I see a king, someone I want to be. But when I look at myself, I see someone poor, alone, and on his knees. Oh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is going to happen? <laughs> Have you read the Quran recently as Asad? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, promises justice for every atom of good and evil, don't you see? That means he will punish you if you continue bullying. I'm so sorry about the other day, says Zane. I cannot believe I acted in such a bad way. My bullying will stop forever, starting to Okay. You guys give me a round of applause. Okay, pause, pause, pause. Okay, I'm going to sing you a song, but before I do, I have just a couple of questions. And these are important. Number one, what did Zane see when he put the glasses on? What did he see? Yes. He saw us as a king, but what did he see when he saw himself? He saw himself poor and on his knees. Why did Zayn see that in his future? Because he was bullying. Now, here's the thing. Look, I want us to learn a very important lesson. Number one. You can hear me clap once. We as Muslims. We as Muslims, we never treat people unkindly. We don't do that. We don't bully. Why? Why don't we do that? Because of what he said. There is justice. If we treat other people badly, if we bully other people, well then, in the future, it's going to come back to us, either in this world or the hereafter. So we don't do that. Do we do that? No! no. Number
number two, number two, very important. In this story, Asad had a friend named Amin who stood up for him. Do you remember? And as Muslims, anytime we see anybody being treated badly, our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be on him, said, if we see injustice anywhere, we should first try to fix it with our hands. If we can't fix it with our hands, we should speak out against it. If we can't speak out against it, the least we should do is we should feel bad about it in our hearts. We have to try, if we see someone getting bullied, we have to tell them to stop. Okay, pause. Put your hands down. Now, I talked about my brother getting bullied, but you know who got bullied a lot more than my brother? Sometimes people would put thorns outside on the street so when he would walk his feet would get prickled. Sometimes people would say mean things to him. But when our holy prophet, peace be upon him, left Mecca and went to Medina, the people welcomed him with a song. And we are going to do this together, okay? And I do not have a microphone. So, I need you to do this with me. And then afterwards, we'll do a couple of questions, okay? Afterwards, we'll do some questions. But I need you to sit on your knees like this, with your chest out. Oh. Your hands on your knees. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do salawat. When we do salawat, we're, sending, uh, we're asking Allah to send his blessings on our holy prophet, okay? <coughs> you guys can all clear your throats too. <laughs> such a wonderful audience, honestly, okay? I want you to give yourselves a round of applause. Okay, now, now, here's what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna pause for a moment. And I'm gonna, we're gonna spend five minutes to answer any questions you might have, okay? So, if you have a question, we'll be able to ask, yes, over here. We're all listening. 
She knows. Alhamdulillah. Now, here's the thing. Pause. Once we finish the program, if you, for example, have a book you want me to sign, or if you want to say hello, I'm going to be sitting in the back over there, and we are. I can sign your book or I can take your photo, okay? So if anyone wants to say, say something personal like that, we'll do that afterwards, okay? Question over here. How do you make up your kids? How do you make up your kids? This is a great question, okay? Okay, so I want to teach you how we make a book, okay? A book has four parts. The first part is research. Everyone said research. Research! That is when we research the topic and come up with a moral of the story. The second thing that we do is called plot development. I want everyone to say plot development. That's when we think of the story. After that, we write the manuscript. I want everyone to say manuscript. That's when we write the words that go in the story. And then finally, number four, we do illustration. That's the actual images. Can everyone say illustration? Illustration! Okay, pause. Pause. Everyone, everyone put your hands down. If you can clap once, you can clap twice. You can clap twice. I hear that many people have to go, so we're gonna pop, we're gonna end our program before we end it. I just want to explain to everyone one last time how Door Kids works because there's only one of me and one of Hassan, and if I can explain it once, that would be awesome. Okay? So Nora Kids is a character building program that we started 10 years ago as students at Harvard University. Alhamdulillah, now we have about 10,000 families that part of our community. Every month, families get a new book in the mail, and then every Thursday night at 4 p.m., we do a live story time program where kids around the world join, sort of like this. Um, it is $30 for four months, so it's about $8 a month. Okay, so one time for the month of forty to thirty dollars, we get a new book every month for four months, and today we get four books for free as a gift. Otherwise, if you want to buy books individually, we also buy the books individually. Four books are for thirty dollars. One book is for eight. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. One last round of applause. No.